Some of the people that I speak with on the internet, including some of you guys, my subscribers, didn't really appreciate Angela Merkel's policy. And many are saying, oh, I can hardly wait for Merkel to step down because then things will change. And now Merkel has stepped down and definitely things are changing. In fact, they're changing so much that I would say it's revolutionary. Now, if you expected that things will change into the right, you are gravely mistaken. If you are expecting that change will change a little bit to the left, I am here to disappoint you yet again. Now, the things are going to change massively towards the far left. So let's see what the new coalition has in store based on its coalition treaty summary. So on a social level, they want more young people to vote. The voting age should be lowered to 16, not only for European elections, but also for general polling. Now, this is the left solidifying power because there is a reason why the saying goes, if you're a young person and you're not a leftist, you have no heart. But if you're an elderly person and you're still a leftist, then you have no brain. It's because when people are young, they don't really understand the consequences of the policies that they're supporting. In other words, it's easy to distract a young person. It's like, oh, we're going to save the planet. We're going to plant more trees. We're going to uh, legalize uh, whatever it is that the transgender activism movement is coming up with. And that's okay. But then when you look at the economy, you're paying 70% in taxes and the unemployment is low. A 60-year-old person doesn't care about the economy because mommy and daddy pay stuff for him. So he's not worried about getting a job. Which means they can ride that economy like a little bitch that it is. And they can do whatever they want. And the younger generation will always vote for them. Because the right-wingers, they seem mean. Oh, austerity measures. Horrible. What do you mean we can't get free stuff? Why are right-wingers so heartless? So they vote left-wing governments and then they grow up. And then they end up getting their own job. And they realize that they're paying more than 50% in taxes. And they realize that, oh, I support the environment. While I have a gaming PC at home, while I want to buy a car, while I have air conditioning at home and I have a flat screen TV, but I really support the environment, why is the government taxing me so much? Why are all these things becoming more expensive? And for some, you know, they may connect the dots. Uh, for others, they, they still don't realize why things are getting more expensive. Probably those evil right-wingers. And the solution is what we see here. Get even more immigrants. Germany needs to become a quote-unquote immigration society. So, it's no wonder. I mean, I'm not shocked. The welfare state is a Ponzi scheme. I know all of us grew up in the welfare state, and we can't think of a world without the welfare state. But before the welfare state, people needed to have large families in order to make sure that someone takes care of them when they are old. So you had four or five kids, and you hope that those four or five kids would say, Grandpa can't work anymore. Let's take care of Grandpa. But now you don't need to because the state takes care of you. Unfortunately, the state can't produce stuff. The state can print money, but it can't print stuff. So what happens is that the welfare system works as long as you keep having more kids than the previous generation. Unfortunately, however, for Germany, a lot of Germans decided they don't want children because they don't need children. So the German government is in a pickle. It's like, oh, we need to keep paying welfare for people but we don't have people to tax. What do we do? Oh, yes, let's get immigrants. And we're going to get the immigrants to work to pay stuff for the lazy German. Not lazy, the, the welfare German, let's put it like that. Where do the immigrants come from? From states that don't have the welfare system, where people have kids. So in other words, the third world needs to now subsidize the welfare for the first world. Very progressive. Furthermore, it promises to make the acquisition of German citizenship a lot easier for immigrants, as well as to enshrine representation of diversity in law without actually saying what it means. But this is, yet again, left-leaning people consolidating even more power. If you're living in Germany for, let's say, the last 20 years, 
And you notice a little bit of decay in the quality of living. Maybe prices are going up. It's difficult to find jobs anymore. Maybe crime is going up. Maybe some of your human rights are being cracked on, like less free speech, less this. People are more uptight. And you start blaming the politicians. And you're like, you know what? Maybe it's time for a change. Maybe we should vote for a different party just to see how it's like. Well, it doesn't matter because now they can bring 10 other people that don't know about these things and they're going to vote for the party that gives them free shit. Because that's the thing, when you're an immigrant, imagine if you go to Germany right now and you don't speak the language and it's difficult for you to find a job because other Germans who speak German can't find a job, well, it's going to be a lot more easy for you to just keep voting for the party that gives you free shit. So that is what the politician can keep doing. Instead of like trying to make decisions that please the people that vote for them, if people don't want to vote for them, they just can keep bringing people from outside. Reminds me of um, a dictator, sorry, a governor from the United States who had, I, I believe, like vaccine mandates or something like that. And the people said, all right, well, if that's the case, we quit. And they were like, oh, it doesn't matter if we quit. We're just going to keep bringing people from outside. In other words, that's the solution for the government now. You know, like the nations aren't a community with traditions, with culture anymore. No, they're just a place where economic transactions happen. And this is unfortunate for the people that actually happen to live there and realize that their way of life is starting to take a hit. As I mentioned, higher taxes, more inflation, higher difficulty in getting a house, that kind of thing. Now, this is something that upsets a lot of people, but I think is the only good thing in the entire uh, coalition treaty that they have. And if you're upset by this, I suggest you think again. So... Apparently, regarding transgender rights, trans people will be replaced with a self-declaration law, which will allow everyone to change their gender by declaration alone. Gender reassignment surgery will be fully funded through the public health system. Rainbow family will receive more support, especially in middle-sized business and in the civil service, but also in education, which is traditionally a devolved matter for the individual states. Now, I talked a lot on my live stream why this is a great thing. And there's two types of people, people who agree with me and people who are wrong. So before I say the highest controversial thing and piss off a lot of my subscribers, let me tell you the story of a Romanian friend of mine by the name of Lucian. Lucian is an IT guy who works in London. And during one of the parties that his company threw, he spoke with his boss while his boss was drunk. And his boss said, Lucian, you're a great lad. And I'm so lucky because when I hired you, I misread the name Luciana. If I knew that you were a guy, I wouldn't have hired you. Now, imagine if you said that to a woman. That would have been a discrimination lawsuit right there. The BBC would talk about it. The Guardian would talk about it. The boss would be fired. She would have made a lot of money. But what can Lucian do? You know, he's a white Romanian, a guy. What, where can he turn? Which activist group would take his case? Which publication would write about it? Who would take him seriously? In fact, if a leftist would listen to this story, they wouldn't even think it's a problem. They would think that's a good thing, right? So now Lucian has the opportunity, the golden opportunity to change his legal documents from M to F. And all of a sudden, he gets all the previous perks that I mentioned. The BBC can write about it. The Guardian can write about it. The, the, the trials are going to take it seriously. He's going to have an easier time getting a promotion. He's going to have an easier time getting employed. He doesn't have to do literally anything except change his legal documents. It's right here in the law. All right? Like, you're not, you're not lying. You're not doing anything illegal. It's not against the system. The law is designed to allow everyone, it says so right here, allow everyone to change their gender by declaration alone. In other words, you don't have to be trans. You don't even have to have dysphoria. All you need to do is to identify as a different gender because it's a social construct. It's like a fashion statement. So now you say, well, I, I want to identify as a woman. Boom, it's in your paper. First you get the paper, then you get to the HR lady, 
and then you have protection. Then you are an actual member of society with rights and uh, with, with the ability of protecting yourself from others who try to discriminate against you. Think of it this way. If you play League of Legends, it used to be that two people went top, two people went bottom, and one person went mid. And then a new patch came and there was a new meta. And in the new meta, only one person went top and you had the jungler which actually went into the jungle. People who refused to play the new meta were losing. People who played the new meta were winning. Because the meta is the way the game is supposed to be played. What is happening here in German society, you had the election, there's a new patch coming up, and this is how the new meta is being played. If you refuse to play the new meta, don't cry when you're being discriminated against. Because now, it's not because... You are born that way. You're born a cisgender white man. No. You had the opportunity to engage with the new meta. They allowed you. They gave you an out. And you refused to take it. Why? I really don't know. What, what, what is wrong with just changing from M to F? Not only that, you also become a rainbow family if you're married. And you will receive more support, especially in middle-sized business and civil service. Look how much perks you get if you play the new meta. It's literally what you need to do. You're not lying. You're not breaking the law. You're not doing anything wrong. Exactly. You're following the legislation. Exactly what they're saying. That's what you're doing. Boom. You get perks. Boom. You get benefits. Boom. Your sexy wife becomes a sexy lesbian. Don't laugh. Like, look, look I'm not joking. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be disparaging or, or whatever. Like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with what I'm telling you. The law is designed in such a way to give you the opportunity to do this. And by the way, this applies to Germany. This probably applies to California. Now. It probably applies to London. Don't do this in other places. If you go into Saudi Arabia to look for a job, the meta there is different. The meta there is to embrace Islam, inshallah. In fact, if I were to work in Saudi Arabia and I would stay there for more than 10 years, I would probably consider converting to Islam because that's how the game is played over there. In Eastern Europe, it's about knowing people. That is the meta. You need, you need to start making connections and knowing people that know other people in order to get a job. In another country, maybe like Japan, perhaps the meta there is meritocracy, is to be the best at what you do. Right? You need to know the meta for the different place you're in. In Germany, this is what I'm telling you. This is how you play the game. If you don't play the game like this, you're playing it on very difficult mode, or nightmare mode. Uh, and of course, uh, this only applies for uh, Romanians, you know, Europeans um, that are men. Uh, women have a different meta. Uh, people who are Muslims, they, they have a different meta, so on and so forth, right? It's... Uh, like, if you're a woman, you can just put a burqa and you can convert to Islam and boom, upgrade, different patch, different versions, right? It, it, it really matter. Like, I'm telling you, okay, I'm not trying to start a movement on this channel. I'm not changing the world. I don't think I have that ability. What I can do, however, is to give you the information on knowing what abilities you have in order to progress. You know, get up the corporate ladder, manage to land that job, uh, obtain money from the government through the rainbow families thing. You know, like that, that type of thing. That's, that's what I'm telling you to do. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. I just think you're dumb. But moving on. In terms of energy, Germany will bank largely on renewables in hope that the technology will develop accordingly. The nuclear power plants will be switched off. So, in a world where we need to have less carbon emissions, they will switch off nuclear power plants. <sighs> Vote green, what can I say? I mean, they are planning to have an army of 16-year-old and uh, immigrants who might become citizens in order to keep voting. I'm pretty sure they really understand about uh, uh, Germany shutting off nuclear power plants. By the way, I, I didn't know about it either. Right? That, that's what happens when you don't live in a country, but then you move to that country and you can vote. You don't know a lot about the nation's history. For example, did you know that it was the Greens that actually were vehemently against nuclear power in Germany? Nuclear power doesn't produce CO2, by the way. And nuclear power means uh, Mama Merkel doesn't go begging to Putin to lower the gas prices. 
yeah, in a German that's uh, in a Germany that's more and more reliant on uh, gas prices from Russia, uh, they're shutting off nuclear power plants. Congratulations! What can I say? Yes, uh, Austria was talking about oh the power outage in Europe. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, get your 16 years to vote. Great. Uh, by the way, will the 16 years also serve in the military if needed? Also curious because I hope not. I'm not. I, it would be interesting. They have a right to vote, but they're not going to serve. How does that work? Huh? Ah, you know, who, who cares? Why, why do I ask the difficult questions? Um, good news, though. Nuclear weapons remain part of NATO's strategic concept. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, at least the nuclear deterrent is on the table. Great. Excellent. Uh, but in the long run, the aim is a Germany free of nuclear weapons. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, they have the European Union. I, I wonder if they're going to push for the entire European Union not to have nuclear weapons. That, that is something that I would definitely support. I, I hope more 16-year-olds are going to vote for it. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section.